All right, let's look at number five. Eternal life is accompanied by personal holiness. Well, I changed it since then. <laughs> That's what I get when I give out Oleg my outline too soon. Here's the new one. Eternal life is accompanied by personal holiness. That's what sanctification means. Sanctification means holiness. The root of that word means to be set apart. We're set apart from sin to God. Every Christian goes through a process that we call progressive sanctification. It means he progressively is separated more and more from sin unto God. His entire life. It lasts his entire life. And then when he meets the Lord finally, when the Lord comes back or he dies, that sanctification is completed. So he is initially sanctified when he's born again. Then he goes through a process of progressive sanctification, personal holiness, and then he experiences ultimate glorification when he is made completely holy and all sin is eradicated from his life. And that happens when he meets the Lord face to face. Eternal life is always accompanied by personal holiness. Let's look at some scripture. Romans chapter 6. Romans 6 verse 22. But now having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit, resulting in sanctification, and the outcome eternal life. Now here it's speaking about eternal life as the full and final expression of eternal life, that everlasting life that we will experience after death. I believe that's what he's talking about here because he says the outcome of this sanctification is everlasting life. So the final expression of it. But notice that before that final expression of eternal life, we go through this process that he calls sanctification. Holiness. Let's look over at Galatians chapter 6, verse 8. Paul says, For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Who's going to reap eternal life? The one who sows to the Spirit. Isn't that what he says? Only the one who sows to the Spirit. How do you know if you've received eternal life? One of the ways you can know it is you're becoming holy. If you're content to live in sin, it may be a real good indicator that you've never received eternal life. The one who has received Christ truly, who's been made one with Jesus Christ, can't help but become holy. I wasn't planning to share this, but I'm going to. Ezekiel 36. Let me just read this to you. Ezekiel 36, 25. Here's a new covenant blessing. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you. That word is there for a reason. It's important that you get this. <laughs> I'm going to put my spirit within you and I'm going to cause you to walk in my statutes and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. That is the work of regeneration. The Spirit comes in, He causes you to live a new kind of life. Now sure, you have times when you cooperate really well with that and you begin to grow in faith. There are times when you put up some roadblocks, but even then, the Spirit of God will overcome those roadblocks. He's committed to your sanctification. In fact, if you get stubborn against that work of holiness, He's going to chastise you. He's going to spank you. He'll, he'll take you backside the woodshed and give you a good licking. Until you get into, oh, I, I, this isn't optional for me. The Lord is my loving Father and He wants me to become like Him. So a life of holiness accompanies the gift of everlasting life in every single case. Every single case. Let's look at one more. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 
verse 12. Paul says, Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and you made the good confession. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. Well, right before he says that, he says, Fight the good fight of faith. In other words, fight the good fight of faith, which will result in taking hold of eternal life. Not the initial acceptance of eternal life. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the eternal life that grows within your soul as you live before God. Fight. These are words that every Christian needs to hear. God has called us to fight. We're not here just to lay down and let the enemy run right over us. We are to take up our sword and do battle against Satan, against sin, against doubts, against fears, against everything that would cause us to stifle up and shrivel up instead of to flower into the beings, the people that God wants us to be. We're to fight. We're to fight. We're to fight day after day after. Our whole life is a life of fighting, fighting the enemies of our soul. You know, sometimes we go down to the light rail and we witness to people there and we'll share the gospel with them and they'll say, well, you don't need to bother about talking to me. I'm already saved. I've already received eternal life. But they're either loaded or drunk or you find out they're living with their girlfriend or they're taking the name of the Lord in vain. And so many people are self-deceived. They think they have eternal life when they're not living a life of holiness. So if, if you are determined to go on living in sin, you ought to just drop your profession of faith. Just say, I don't have eternal life if you're going to go on living in sin. Because eternal life will cause you to walk in God's law, God's ordinances, and to do His will.